In this video, we will show you how to solve the Dirac equation for moving particles in any reference frame. There are many ways to get to the solution, and in this video, we will use a nice trick to get to the solution very easily. First off, by using a plane wave ansatz in the Dirac equation, we get two kinds of solutions. Particle solutions, described by the Dirac spinner u, and antiparticle solutions, described by the Dirac spinner v. If we use this plane wave ansatz in the Dirac equation, we get two equations for u and v. In the rest frame of the particle, we can solve these equations. Depending on the representation of the gamma matrices, u and v look slightly different when written in terms of their wild spinners. But let's return to these defining equations again. We will now use the following trick. We assume that u and v are given in terms of their rest frame solutions as k slash plus m times u and k slash minus m times v. These states have to be normalized, but that will be the topic of a different video. But anyway, why does this work? Consider this. k slash plus m times k slash minus m is equal to k squared minus m squared. And since k squared is equal to m squared, this is zero. This also works the other way. Therefore, if we write the general solutions like this in terms of the rest frame solutions, then the defining equations are automatically fulfilled. That's the trick we promised you. Let's now do the calculation. To do so, we must choose a representation of the gamma matrices, since here inside case slash we have gamma matrices. First, we use the Dirac representation. Here, gamma 0 is diagonal. Gamma 1, 2, 3 are given in terms of the Pauli matrices, and the rest frame by spinners look like this. First of all, we have to write down k slash. Next, we have to add or subtract the mass and multiply it onto the rest frame solutions. The result looks like this, and keep in mind, those solutions are not normalized. If we look at the limit of small velocities, then these solutions go over to the rest frame solutions. Next, we use the while representation of the gamma matrices. Here, gamma mu can be written in terms of sigma mu and sigma bar mu, which are defined like this. And the rest frame while representation by spinners look like this. The first step is again to write down k slash. Then we add or subtract the mass times the identity matrix and multiply this onto the rest frame solutions. The result looks like this. Again, not normalized. And in the limit of small velocities, we get the rest frame spinners again. Before we end this video, let us remark that the solutions in the while representation can also be written in a different way. This is how u and v are usually portrayed in QFT textbooks. So to conclude this video, let us show that these expressions are actually the same, even though they look different. Let's focus on the upper two components of u. The rest follows a very similar calculation. On the left, we write the bispinner as we calculated it in this video, including the normalization. And on the right, we put the square root of k times sigma. First, we multiply both sides with the square root of k times sigma bar. And we write this term twice, but under a square root. Since k times sigma multiplied with k times sigma bar equals m squared, we can simplify both sides. Next, we can multiply the resulting square root on the left side and again use that k times sigma multiplied with k times sigma bar is m squared. The terms cancel each other nicely and we see that both sides are really equal. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.